we are at La Fertelay in France, uh, a real mecca for the large model enthusiast. Probably uh, an event unequalled anywhere else in the world. It is a mecca for large modelers from all over Europe. There's quite a contingent here from the UK and just about every other European country where large models are operated. It's run by the IMAA, the International Miniature Aircraft Association Europe. It's under their direction and we take over the airfield for pretty much three days. Friday is for test flying. Uh, the rules in France are that any new model has to be uh, inspected by a team of inspectors that are walking around here uh, and they will go over the aeroplane with a fine tooth comb and check it against the dossier which you have to produce and submit beforehand. The dossier runs to 22 pages and covers in very great detail everything about the aeroplane. Not only the construction, but the radio installation, the power of the servos, the mountings, just about everything you can think of. Each individual inspection of the aeroplane by the inspectors takes an hour, hour and a half, and only when they're happy and they've checked all the systems, they've seen all the fail-safes work, the dual receivers work in each part individually, will you be called forward to make two test flights. These again are done on the Friday and only on satisfactory completion of these two test flights will you get a permit to fly. Without the permit to fly you can't take part in the show. This is a 1932 Weddell Williams racer by Pascal Madieu. The model is half scale with a wingspan of 4.2 meters weighing 65 kilograms. Power is supplied by a 200cc aero petrol engine and reduction unit. It's a category 3 model took eight months to build, first flew on the 1st of June 2001 and has now completed 25 flights. That unique sound comes from the Cadayan 1.1 by 0.9 meter pitch propeller and the reduction unit on the engine. We'll see a number of models of these purpose-built racing machines from the 1930s and the story of the Weddell Williams is typical. It was designed and built by Jim Weddell with financial backing from Louisiana millionaire Harry Williams. With that kind of money behind him, he could afford to use the very finest engineers and equipment, yet was, at heart, a seat of the pants designer and builder and was known to have laid out his designs in chalk on the hangar floor. If any blueprints existed at all, they were usually drawn after the aircraft was completed. This immaculate F-86 Sabre took 2,000 hours to build by Henri Vield from Switzerland. It's to one-third scale with a wingspan of 4.2 meters and weighs 60 kilograms. Its 32 kilograms of thrust comes from two Jetcat P-160 turbines. Electrical power comes from seven 2,400 milliamp batteries which run the 25 servos that operate features like the air brakes, nose wheel brake, lights, opening cockpit canopy, retractable undercarriage and flaps. The F-86 Sabre is most famous for the part it played in the Korean War, where it engaged in the very first jet-on-jet -jet dogfights with Korean and Chinese MiG-15s. The Sabre went on to fly with the air forces of many other countries, some remaining in frontline service into the late 70s and early 80s. Henri's model depicts an aircraft in classic USAF markings. He's got lots of experience in operating big jet models and claims the F-86 is easy to fly, although this problem with the nose wheel door mechanism marred the end of this particular flight. The event features a number of big-scale aerobatic models this one is a Sukhoi Su-26, built and flown by Francois Tang of Belgium. The purpose-built competition aerobatic aircraft on which this model is based may look old-fashioned. However, they're anything but. Built to withstand enormous stresses, they use the latest composite materials and are immensely strong, being able to withstand very high G-forces. This model is built to half scale, powered by a Hurt 400cc petrol engine swinging a 40 by 16 inch propeller and has made 150 flights to date. 
Control is through 13 servos, drawing power from a pair of 4 amp batteries. All up weight is 55 kilograms. French modeler Claude Larray took 2,000 hours to build this one-third scale, 3.7-meter wingspan Ryan STA, powered by a Czech ZDZ Boxer 4 160cc engine. You can just see a video camera mounted on the starboard wingtip, its weight causing a pronounced roll effect. The Ryan was a 1930s design and one of the first low-wing monoplane sport aircraft and possibly the very first of aluminium monocoque construction. It was hugely successful, and versions went on to be widely used for military flight training. This model is finished to represent just such a machine, displaying the markings of the US Army. The Swiss-built Pilatus PC-7 turbo trainer is designed to provide all aspects of basic flying training, including aerobatics, instrument, tactical and night flying, and is operated by some 20 air forces around the world to train professional military pilots. Since its introduction in 1978, close to 500 aircraft have been sold, most still in service today. This one-third scale model is by Christiane Langensee of France and suffered a disconnected aileron linkage, causing alarming wing flutter. So a prudent early landing seems like a good idea. We have a dream to board uh, the big, big pitch, and the dream is, uh, yeah, it's, it's coming, it's here. <laughs> uh, the big model is 85 percent. The weight is 70 kilos, and. Uh, 4 meters 56 span, span wide and uh, the engine is 521 cubic and 45 horsepower, 20 servos, 17 high tech 805 BB, uh, 24 kilos and uh, for the engine three servos uh, Graupner Jumbo
20 kilos. The Kohling is uh, auch uh, Glasfaser. Okay. Und uh, Wabe. Yeah. And, uh, and, and coal. Kohle. A big propeller is uh, 40, 40 salts uh, and the pitch uh, 18. Another design from Francois Tang here, a 3.1 meter wingspan, half-scale Kristen Eagle II, weighing 45 kilograms. It's powered by a 380 cc Weslake twin, turning a 39 by 16 inch homemade propeller. Based on the famous Pitt Special, the Eagle II was designed by Frank Christensen as an unlimited class aerobatic aircraft that could be used for competition, advanced aerobatic training, and sport cross-country flying. It can be supplied for home build in kit form, and since its introduction, more than a thousand Eagle IIs have been delivered. model took 2,500 hours to build, first flew in 1995 and has made more than 150 flights. Tony White is well known for his large-scale models of aircraft from the World War I era. We asked him to tell us about his superb Bristol Bulldog. It's a um, Bristol Bulldog uh, Mark IIA, which was the later version. The advantage of that, it had a bigger fin and a steerable tailwheel, which I thought would be handy on concrete especially. The model's built to an odd scale. I think it's 47 and a quarter percent. And the scale was partly dictated by the size that fit in my van <laughs> to transport it. And it seemed about the right size for the, um, the engine. It's powered by uh, a JPX 425cc uh, Micromite twin petrol engine. And it turns a uh, 44 inch by 13 inch propeller. The full size aircraft is built of, quite cleverly. It's a uh, high tensile steel strip that's rolled and shaped into round sections and dumbbell shaped sections for the wing spars and things like that. And it was sort of one of the air all metal aircraft. Um, the model has got the structure in the same place, but I've obviously used wood for quite a big proportion of it. 
It weighs uh, 171 pounds, but it's got quite a big wing area. It's about 68 square feet of wing area. So it's got a, the wing load is two and a half pounds a square foot, which is it's quite reasonable, really. It's covered in uh, full size second eye material from America. And um, the, uh, as, as a coincidence, I did the Newport, which was restored by Sky Sport. And I picked this one purely by chance. And it turned out that Sky Scott got the job of completely rebuilding the uh, remaining bulldog that crashed um, in the 1960s at the bottom of a loop. And um, I picked the same marking, so it was quite nice to find they were doing it. And uh, I spent a really good day at uh, Hendon, where it is now, where the museum can let me some, take some close-up photographs. It's actually covered in some of the aluminium dope that was left over from the full-size restoration. So if anybody says the, the covering's not authentic, <laughs> they, they may be wrong. It's quite a nice model to fly. It's, it's quite amazing that most of the aircraft are fairly early on in the years you know, 1914, that sort of era. And it's amazing how much the aerodynamics have improved in those sort of 15 to 20 years. It's much more balanced. One of the things I like to do is to try and keep the assembly time down. And everything else that you add, extra plugs and sockets and extra bits and pieces, just, just takes longer to assemble it. And it you know, you get a bit fed up of <laughs> spending too much time, you know. But the, 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 the uh, rigging wires should actually be flat bracing wires, but I used round because it, it makes it again easier to disassemble. The, the wires are permanently fitted and they're left on there, and it's a case of unfastening them from the struts, and they're just temporarily fitted against there with some cushioning material. And I can assemble the full model in less than a quarter of an hour quite easily and that's, I found that quite an advantage you know, it's, it's maybe a compromise but one that I think is yeah, reasonable The Bristol Bulldog was developed for the Air Ministry's Interceptor Fighter Specification F1724 of 1924 Made by the Bristol Aeroplane Company it was a single seat day and night fighter of all metal construction with fabric covering the engine was a 490 horsepower Bristol Jupiter, giving it a maximum speed of 174 miles per hour and a ceiling of 27,000 feet. Armament was two synchronized Vickers 303 machine guns. It came into service with the Royal Air Force fighter squadrons to replace the aging Gamecocks and Siskins, and by 1932, nine squadrons of the Royal Air Force were equipped with Bulldogs. It was the most widely used fighter between 1932 and 1936, and during the Abyssinian crisis, Number 3 Squadron, equipped with Bristol Bulldogs, was sent to the Sudan. It was whilst flying a Bulldog that Douglas Bader crashed, losing both legs, but going on to achieve fame flying Spitfires and Hurricanes in World War II. This is a 4.3 meter wingspan, one-third scale Vought F4U Corsair, the famous US World War II carrier-based fighter bomber. Among the scale features of the model are a scale sequencing undercarriage, accurate flap operation, and a functioning bomb release mechanism. This 56 kilogram model was designed and built by Jean Behrings of France and is powered by a 340 cc Weslake engine and finished in French naval colors. It's from how he deals with the problem that you can tell how good a pilot is. And this is a masterclass from Jean. In this case, an undercarriage leg has not come down. 
First, Jean tries some high G maneuvers to try to persuade the leg to come down. No luck. Clearly, a wheels up landing is unavoidable, so he retracts the remaining leg and lines up for a landing in soft grass. A last touch. He cuts the engine just before touchdown to avoid damage to the propeller or engine. Beautifully done.